What's up YouTube, Oliver here. In today's video, I'm going to be looking at three Mac apps from a developer called Needed Apps. These three apps are Meta Image, Snap Motion, and Glue Motion. They're all kind of aimed around photo video. So basically, you've got Meta Image, which allows you to e edit the metadata in photographs. You can do this individually, and also you can uh, do bulk photographs all at the same time. You have Glue Motion and Snap Motion, which basically uh, one of them allows you to um, create sort of time-lapse videos. You can just stitch multiple pictures together and then export it as like an MP4 or a MOV. And the other allows you to export a still frame from a video. And these are three very useful utilities um, to have if you kind of do a lot of photography or video work. They're, they're, you'll find that, you know, all three of them will you know, come in useful. Um, so I'm going to have a look at them in this video and I'm going to give you my thoughts and sort of a demonstration on how they basically work. They are very affordable. They're all available in the Mac App Store. Uh, I believe at least at the time of filming this video, they're all around about £10. So they are affordable apps, um, but they are very useful utilities and there's some really nice tools there. Um, so it is worth checking them out. Okay, well, let's have a look. Okay, so these are the three apps here. So I've got Meta Image, Snap Motion, and Glue Motion. So I'm going to go through all three of them. So let's start with Meta Image. So this is what you're presented with when you first open the application. Um, so basically, this is a tool that allows you to import images and then edit the metadata for those images. So things like, for example, the copyright information, the author, the date and time they were taken, the GPS location, and all that sort of thing. Um, now, as a photographer, I do a bit of photography more as a hobby. I have a DSLR camera. Um, it's a Canon EOS camera, it's the same one I use to make my YouTube videos. But it doesn't have a GPS um, receiver built into it because a lot of the entry-level cameras, they quite a lot of them generally don't have a GPS um, like geotagger built into them. You can buy an additional um, piece of hardware that goes on the hot shoe, and it's I think it's like a couple of hundred pounds. So it is quite expensive, but this tool, like I say, this is a very affordable app. I think it's around about the £10 mark. It lets you really easily edit metadata, and it is handy, um, as I'll show you in a minute, to be able to do things like add location to your images, because if you're using a tool like Lightroom to be able to organize your photography, it's much easier to be able to view them sometimes on a map view, and then you can quickly go to pictures in a certain location, and it just makes it that bit easier. So. It is nice. And one other thing is that you can also um, remove metadata from images quite easily if you're going to share them online and you don't want people to know the specifics about what you use to take the images with or the location. Anyway, so you can either drag and drop images or click to import them. So there's some pictures. I'm just going to import um, these. These are all pictures I took myself. I'm just going to import some of them. And basically when the pictures all load in, they're down here at the side. Now, what you can do is you can basically go through all of these um, and it gives you all the information. Obviously the previews just show you what the image looks like. It's not going to be high resolution image. It's just about editing the data that's attached to them. And basically um, you can go through these and you can change the data. So as you can see, the standard things is stuff like the camera make, model, um, date and time, the ISO, F number, all that kind of thing. And you can obviously just literally click in and manually adjust things like the focal length or the f-stop if you wanted to do that. You can manually just change them all. Now you can do that for one image by clicking the image in the side, or you can do it for multiple images by holding shift and then it lets you select multiple images. Now there's certain things, because it's all different values, for example, it tells you they're all at ISO 100, but they're all different f-stops. Now I don't suppose you'd maybe want to change data like, you know, camera specifics, but for example, things like the date and time they were taken on, that might be useful. Or, um, you know, specifically the location is a big one for me because it's something my camera doesn't do and it's nice to add that in. You can also do things like, you know, put your lens information and um, you can also put, for example, your name and copyright and that kind of thing in the image if you're going to share that just to make sure that, you know, people know that it is copyright and all that kind of thing. Uh, but basically, you can also add location. So it says no embedded location here and you can just click on show editor. 
and this location editor comes up. Now all the pictures show here on the left hand side that you've imported. You have a map here, so you've got various options. You can either search a location or copy it from a file. You can manually enter the coordinates or you can browse to it on the map here. So this is just using an Apple map. So say, um, I want to say this was taken in Newcastle upon Tyne. So I just click on the map and it just puts a random pin in there. And the images that I've got selected all have that location applied to them. And then if you click close, as you can see, it then shows this is the location that we're taken in. Um, you know, and that's, that's a really handy feature to have. And then you would need to process the images. So it's not like you've got to re-export the images all over again. You can literally just process the changes. It's not, you don't have to export them to a different folder or overwrite. You literally just click process. Um, I'm not going to do that because I don't want to kind of mess up the data. But if you click process, um, what it'll do is it'll basically just export your changes um, to the, the image files. And as I was mentioning before, with something like Lightroom, you can basically um, have a map view when you're organizing your photos and that can be uh, really useful um, you know, to be able to see all the kind of pinpoints on a map. So that's basically meta image and how that works. Okay, so the next step is snap motion and it allows you to basically export frames from a video. This could be really handy for creating video thumbnails and things like that. I mean, I use Final Cut Pro to edit my videos, so it's not something I would need personally but if you don't have a professional video editing tool, this could be useful to export a frame. I don't think iMovie, for example, has the functionality to export an individual frame at high resolution. So this could be quite useful. You can either go to batch mode and do multiple at the same time, or you can manually select a file. I'm just going to import one of my YouTube videos here. So this is just a, a video from BB Edit, and you can basically play through it. You can go through frame by frame until you find an appropriate moment that you then want to export and you just click on the camera button and it takes a picture. You can click play if you want to play through the clip, you can have sound on and off. You can play it at a slower speed if you want to. You can click here to set specific start and end time and then include frames. So you can automatically just generate between say a certain time you want to export every frame. You can automatically generate every frame and that sort of thing. So there are lots of options and like I say you basically just click the picture button and then it exports it down here and you can do whatever you want with that you can export and share it and it does as I say allow you to therefore export a very specific frame of a video um, and that's something quite handy to be able to do you can just export as all these different formats. You can actually create an animated GIF as well from if you have you know a number of frames from a video that you want to put into a GIF, you can, you can export that. It's a really, really handy feature there, as well as copying it and that sort of thing. So there's a lot of nice features, uh, you know, really useful tool there for going through a video file and exporting a certain frame. Um, but again, it's quite a straightforward tool. There's not a lot to it, but it is very nice. You know, it's a very good price and it's a useful utility to have if you do a lot of video work. It is useful to be able to pull out certain frames. Um, so yeah, generally it is a useful tool. And finally, we're going to have a look at glue motion. So glue motion is, you could almost say it's a bit like the opposite of snap motion because instead of creating frames from a video, you basically put frames into the software and it generates a video file from that. So it could be, you know, a nice way to create a, um, a time lapse video. But you could also use it for, for numerous things. You could import lots of photographs you took on a day out and export a video file that you could create as a slideshow. You know, if you just really quickly want a movie file um, which has all your pictures in and you don't have to do much work because you could like, import them all manually into Final Cut or, you know, whatever and make a slideshow that way. But this is just a really quick and easy way of importing lots of frames and then just quickly exporting a video from that. And you've got a lot of advanced functionality as well. So it is quite a nice tool. So let's have a look. We can just go to add. Um, we'll just use those same images again. And then it basically lets you look at those images and you can then click on this up here and this moves to the next stage, which is to edit frames. Now you can choose to edit all the frames 
you can edit them frame by frame but it allows you to make like batch edits so if you want to increase the brightness of every frame you literally just come over here you can increase the brightness you can increase the exposure you know really handy features you can sharpen the images so there's some really good things that you can do and then that automatically applies to all of your your images so you can quite easily create a nice slideshow you can crop the images to a certain ratio you can adjust the scale you can rotate and flip and that kind of thing so say you want to make the image Bit bigger or something you can just click on these and it will adjust the scale accordingly you then go to set up deflickering and that allows you to uh, enable de or disable deflickering and then adjust the settings for that and uh, i believe it's just to do with when you're putting lots of frames together if the frames don't quite match up and you're putting them together in quite a fast video it might look a bit flickery um, the kind of transition between the frames because you can use this to create like a 30 frame per second video um, and obviously if you've got lots of images it might not work very well so you may want to you know be able to adjust the sort of deflickering to kind of have a bit of a smoother transition between frames and then you go to set up encoding which is the final stage and you can give it a file name you can choose where you want it to export to and you basically have three different file options you've got MOV, MP4 and M4V uh, you can choose your codecs, you can have Apple ProRes, um, the high efficiency video codec, you've got the H.264 and also a JPEG. So you can choose the, the codecs and what sort of rendering you want it to do. And this allows you to specify the frames per second. So if you had thousands of frames, if you're making a big time lapse video, you would obviously maybe have it like 25, 30 frames a second, which is like a standard frame rate, say for a YouTube video. But if you wanted to make, say, a slideshow of pictures where you want to have, rather than it making like a really fast animation frame by frame, you want it to actually be a slideshow where you show one picture a second. For example, you can adjust the frames all the way down to, say, if you want to have two frames a second, you can do that. And it tells you the estimated duration is going to be five seconds. Of course, you can adjust that however you want. Uh, and it's worth pointing out the lowest number you can actually have in there is one so you can the minimum the, like the slowest speed you can have is it changes every one second i suppose it's not really designed as a as a tool to create photo slideshows so you couldn't have it stay on for five seconds so it would be fairly quick it's it's not so much designed as like a, a presentation tool more as something to create animations where you're going to have lots of frames quickly but you could use it for things other than time lapse um, and one other thing is that this particular application glue motion has a dark theme and the other two have light themes there's no way to adjust the color scheme but to be honest I'd quite like to see dark mode available for the other two because I'm quite a fan of dark apps and it'd be quite nice to see meta image and uh, snap motion also have the option to turn on this sort of dark mode uh, especially with Mojave coming soon maybe we'll see that I don't know but yeah basically that's how um, Blue motion works. Well, as always, all the links will be in the video description. If you have any comments, please do leave them in the comments section. I'll do my best to answer your questions. If you like the video, please do thumbs up. And if you do enjoy my videos and you'd like to see more like these, please do subscribe to the channel and feel free to share the video. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and bye for now.